you remember Stanley Milgram who was a Yale psychologist and he had this test where he would get regular people off the street who would come in and they'd have to shock this other person who was really an actor pretending to be shocked and the scale would go all the way up to fatal XXX and it was a huge percentage it was like 66 percent of those people off the street executed that actor because they were told to do so are they sociopaths or psychopaths or people think that everybody's either left or right and, th and that's it and those are the only two viewpoints that really matter I like him but yeah. I'm saying that I think that he could not win I don't believe that middle America is gonna vote for this guy because I think she he has been de defined voters came out there they voted and they wanted right. their voice heard well, the term bipartisan is so offensive you hear it all the time when you listen to television bipartisan well I like the term nonpartisan because I'm not bipartisan. I'm not interested in either party. I, I consider myself an independent. And I like Morris actually last night, and I actually do like to follow because I do think he has great insights. No, I, I agree with that. He, he said that it doesn't matter that you don't need to be a manager, you don't need to be a governor, you don't need to be a, a business leader in order to be a good president. He said you need to be a good speaker, right. which of course Obama is quite good at that. In the city of LA, we have Special Order 40. I don't know if you know yeah. much about that, but we're a sanctuary city and there are 25 cities in this country that are. Recently, we had a situation where a, an illegal gang member killed uh, a young black kid who was very... Those are the people that work in um, in slaughterhouses don't speak English, which also is a hazard because if you've got some people that speak one language and other people that speak another, you can't even communicate properly to be safe. And you also obviously don't have union representation. Um, that's yeah. One is you obviously monitor your accounts like what Ralph is saying, you know, make sure you're always kind of on top of your bank accounts and your credit card yeah. accounts. Um, also, there's something called shoulder surfing when you're like looking at your computer or even at an ATM where people try to look over your shoulder and get information that way. So you have mm. to be careful. Um, Louisiana, for example, has a law that if you rape a child under 12, then you get you the get death, death penalty. penalty. Also because of the court system, and I think it's whether you have a good attorney that's representing well, you. And if you're that? poor, you're not going to get a good attorney. There's not equal and there's a book that recently came out called Love and Sex with Robots by David Levy, and he says that by the year 2050 that we will be dating robots, marrying robots, and they will be just like real people. And they will be breaking our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> The people that run the website got the information from the police station, so they got rosters of all the different names, and then you come on and you can tell about your experience with a per particular police officer. The members of the public can ask questions. And there was a report called The Structural Imbalance of Talk Radio that came out, um, I don't know, maybe six months ago or a year ago, and um, I think it's a highly biased report, yeah, which but they said that 91% of talk radio is conservative and only 9% is progressive. Or they get this pressure, and if they don't you know, comply with this pressure and be tough on you crime, they don't get reelected. The country, well, actually, the country that has the smallest number of people in prison is called San Marino. It's the Republic of San Marino, which is next to Italy. Oh, no. And capita. how many people are in that in prison? Jail? Yeah. Um. I'm going to guess it, one. That's right. <laughs> it's probably the town it's, drunk. My it's perspective probably, would be when I look at stem cell research, I say, well, how is this going to affect you know, research on animals? Because I don't like the idea of research on animals or vivisection. And so are more animals going to live or die if we have stem cell research? And that's a different perspective, but that's not something you're going to hear when you turn on cable news or you turn on talk radio in general, whether they have the fairness doctrine or not. You know, you, that's the best way you can help with the global warming problem and to help the environment is to be a vegetarian. And so if you drive a Hummer and you're a vegetarian, you're actually doing a lot more for the world than if you eat meat and you drive the most energy efficient vehicle on, on the earth. Um, right. Situation, uh, bees declining and something called colony collapse disorder. Something like 60 to 70 percent of the bees they say are now, you know, dying in the, you know, or have died in just in the United States alone and it's um, hurting, you know, various crops and Einstein says that once the bees are dead, then humans will die within four years. And they're not really sure what's causing this. They're animals in the shelters in California. It costs taxpayers $250 million. And it can cost 200 bucks to take an animal into the shelter to house, feed, and then eventually kill that animal. So it's really important that people not only get their animals fixed, which they now have to do by law, but that when they adopt, they go to a shelter or a nonprofit 
and get the animal that way and don't go to breeders Can or pet shops. Two, you want two cats and if you let them have babies and they have, their babies have babies, you end up during that cat's lifetime with 25,000 animals that are born during that lifetime. I know, they're 000. running around my house. Yeah, you got, you got to get them trapped. In this country, yeah. 41 million people are affected by this water. Yeah. And so they got this report. It's like 10 inches thick, but now they're not allowed to release it. The White House will not let them release the findings. And apparently various municipalities do water tests and find this kind of thing, but they right. normally don't even release it to the public say that a quarter of the people have um, changed away from their childhood religion and if you add the Protestant denominations then you come up with 44 percent of the people. Apparently they found out that men get depressed when they go to religious services, not all men but a large number of men, and women it actually takes them out of depression and makes them less anxious. Mormonism is the fastest growing religion in the Western Hemisphere. That was the I understand, form. I understand what they're doing, but in a way I feel like they're going overboard because, you, th you know, my daughter grew up and she went at first to public schools, you know, in Los Angeles, and she knows people that were pregnant at 14, and one girl that's been pregnant like three times before the age of 18, and some of them have babies, and I the point is the government hasn't been running into their houses and, you know, plucking them out and saying, you're not fit parents, and we're going to test no, the no, DNA, no, no. and who is the father? They're not doing that. So to me, I think maybe they're going overboard. There is a hysteria. There's Explain for yeah. people that don't know what mm. the fair tax is. The fair tax means you would abolish the IRS, yeah. and what you would do is you would have, basically it's a 30 percent tax, although some people will say it's a 23 percent tax. It kind of depends on how you look at it. But That's how you calculate it. All goods purchased would right. be have this tax. But however, but I no, remember, this is really stupid, but I remember when they said don't drink and drive and that came out. I thought it meant water. I thought you weren't allowed to drink anything. For years I thought this. <laughs> a German man went, was going through a divorce and what he did is he went to his house, he chainsawed the house <laughs> in half <laughs> and he forklifted half of it away and put it at his brother's house. That's what he did. <laughs> but they did come from the corset. And the corset was developed for men so that women would have a very small waist. And the bra was kind of a, evolved from that because it was more comfortable. In Korea, they have uh, developed something basically called passion phones. And oh, what you do is you talk on your phone, you're talking to somebody, and there's like a love detector. It, basically, the phone is like a love detector. So after you hang up the phone, you, come up with you these get stories. a text message that says, this person doesn't really like you, this person was lying to you, or this person is being honest, this person cares about you. So you get a little message as far as telling you what, and it analyzes the voice of the caller, you know, the person you're talking to on the phone.